your take on crypto? Well, I mean, like, look, who doesn't have, like, some regret having not bought Bitcoin back at a dollar? <laughs> All right? So, you know, I, I wish I'd known Apple from when I was a child, too. But I don't. So there's always, you know... All I know is that if I could replay history, we would have done much better. Citadel CEOs and billionaire Ken Griffin has joined the list of billionaires admitting they were wrong about crypto. Griffin, the third ninth richest person in the world with a net worth of about $29.3 billion, according to Bloomberg, said that while he is still not completely sold on crypto, Citadel cannot ignore the space any longer. I still have my skepticism, but there are hundreds and millions of people in this world today who disagree with that, he said. To the extent that we're trying to help institutions and investors solve their portfolio allocation problems, we have to give serious consideration to being a market maker in crypto. He added that it is fair to assume that Citadel will begin to engage with cryptocurrencies over the months to come. Griffin has previously been extremely critical of crypto. In November 2017, Griffin compared Bitcoin to the tulip bubble mania of the 1630s, in which the prices of flowers spiked before crashing. Cryptocurrencies have rapidly garnered mainstream attention in the last two years, with the total market cap hitting $2 trillion in August 2021. Even though he said he remains skeptical about the market's long-term value, he told Bloomberg that his investment firm will likely work with cryptocurrencies in the near future. He also shares his thought on what needs to be done for him and many others to come into the crypto space. Teacher can full thought on the crypto industry and why we believe that Bitcoin will go to a new all-time high once his suggestions are implemented. Watch till the end of the video. Before we listen to the rest part of the interview, please take a moment to smash the like button and consider subscribing if you are yet to do so. Your take on crypto? Well, I mean, like, look, who doesn't have, like, some regret having not bought Bitcoin back at a dollar? <laughs> All right? So, you know, I, I wish I'd known Apple from when I was a child, too. But I don't. So there's always, you know, all I know is that if I could replay history, we would have done much better. You know, in all seriousness, a number of my colleagues are, are very excited about crypto. And they're excited about it for a litany of legitimate reasons. You'll see Citadel Securities start to make markets in cryptocurrencies. I think in doing so, you'll, you'll see another very responsible participant in the market that creates liquidity. I, I do think that the Terra Luna, just catastrophe, should be a wake-up call to D.C. to actually focus on thoughtful regulation. And in particular, stablecoin, by virtue of its name, almost demands being appropriately regulated. Bloomberg's done some phenomenal work on Tether. What's behind Tether? The fact that we can't, we don't know, is, is utterly absurd. So if you're going to represent that you have a stablecoin, that's worth a dollar. You better damn well be able to back it up with custody accounts that show you the assets that define that stability. And the Terra Luna fiasco. I mean, you saw people lose their entire life savings in two days. But do, do you think that's, was it almost like a, a run on the bank? Is it the beginning of the end? Or, you know, will we see more regulation? I, I'd like to see thoughtful regulation. I, I'd like to see the SEC really carve out their view on what is a security, what isn't a security. The market, I think, after all these years, deserves certainty in that dimension. And then just as we have daily disclosures of the ETF holdings, we should have periodic disclosure of what backs the stable coins so that people know if their money's safe or not. Um, Ken, talk to me about regulation. Is there any part of the regulation that the SEC is going through that you think is a good idea? Well, I'd love to see, I'd love to see Gary Gensler pivot from talking about regulating cryptocurrency to actually giving regulatory clarity. I, I mean, from my perspective, that has been the giant regulatory failure of the last two years. We've seen a trillion change dollars wiped out of value in the crypto space. We saw the Terra Luna disaster just like hit right at people's pocketbooks in what they thought was a stable investment. And we still don't have regulatory clarity around crypto. So I, you know, number one is, the SEC has got, to, has got to address this issue. And whether it's them on their, on their own or in partnership with the CFTC, the markets need more clarity in crypto. And with more clarity in crypto, you're going to see more of the tier one firms able to provide liquidity, able to provide research, able to help enhance price discovery. That will help the market mature into whatever it's going to become. But you want your tier one firms to help make that maturation process happen. That comes with regulatory clarity. 
I, you know, I think the meme stock phenomena, we, we spoke about it for a few minutes uh, just, you know, here. You know, I think the SEC was in a really tough box about how to handle that moment in time. Mm -hmm. Freedom of speech issues come into play really hard. I mean, you know, it was very clear that some of the trading had, had in its basis this idea of hurting others through short squeezes. Yep. You know, it, it's borderline market manipulation when it gets into that, into that level. But I think that's really tough for the SEC to have addressed. I, I don't know what they should have done on that front. Like, it's, it's a really interesting intersection of First Amendment rights, social media, and financial markets. And I, I just don't have the right answer to this because I'm, I'm such a huge believer in First Amendment rights. I, I think that's that's really dangerous what area for us to tread in terms of, of regulatory matters. And then the, the regulatory agenda for this year, you know, they dumped 700 pages of new regulations into the market as my holiday present for all of us in this room. We, we got that present. Did you read it all? I, I have not read all of it. I have other things to do with my life, but I've read a lot of executive summaries that make me want to cry. <laughs> and I, it's, a, it's a lot of regulation with, with reasoning behind it that I don't understand. Like, you often see regulations, you go, I understand what they're trying to get at. And, and for much of this, I don't understand what wrong they're trying to right or what information asymmetry they're trying to address. And so that's very worrisome to me because the United States, with debt to GDP at roughly 130%, with a wall of entitlements ahead of us, Washington, in every dimension, has got to be focused on grow the damn economy. If we grow the economy, that will help on the inflation front, that will help bring more people back into the workforce, that will help us address the promises we've made to those who are going to retire. And yet, out of Washington, the current, the current rhetoric and action plan is about slowing down the ability for our country to move forward. I mean, this idea that we're going to tax companies as being anti-inflationary is the most, most absurd concept I've ever heard of. Like, we're going to tax our companies that need to invest in CapEx, invest in hiring people, invest in training their workforce. And all this will happen in smaller quantities. We're going to tax these companies, and we think that's going to reduce inflation? I mean, like, just go take out a simple economics book, for God's sake. So I, I really worry about where we are in the regulatory front right now because we need to go the exact opposite direction. We need to encourage investment in capital and in people to grow our economy to meet the promises that we've made to the American citizens. Griffin isn't the only billionaire to change his stance on the value of cryptocurrencies. Berkshire Hathaway chairman Warren Buffett, who famously referred to crypto as rat poison, recently invested $1 billion in crypto-friendly Nubank. Still, his longtime partner Charlie Munger continued to deride crypto, more recently liking it to venereal disease. Shark Tank celebrity and billionaire Mark Cuban once complained that crypto is too difficult to use, too easy to hack, way too easy to lose, too hard to understand, too hard to assess a value. Today, he has invested heavily and refers to himself as a crypto evangelist. Financier Carl Icahn invested $1.5 billion in crypto after previously saying he wouldn't touch the stuff. Believe it or not, we strongly believe here at Savvy Finance that Bitcoin will be a million dollars a coin in the near future. When was the last time you bought Bitcoin? Bitcoin is currently on sale. Go buy yourself some Satoshi today to stay savvy.